everybody? Real Estate Cowboy Shaner here. Talk to you about the month of July for our Wicked Awesome Monthly Market Update. Um, I don't even know where to start. Just to hear that. Silence. It's been pretty quiet around in the Ottawa area. Again, it is summer. It is July. And uh, yeah, things do slow down quite a bit in July. But I would like to take another shot into my awesome t-shirt from one of my favorite movie quotes of all time is, get to the chopper! And it's one of those things that every time I actually see a chopper in the sky, I always yell at the kids, hey, get to the chopper, get to the chopper! And I scream it as loud as I can that I make sure that everybody hears me. So it's a good thing I live somewhere where there isn't anybody. All right, so let's get on with the show here. Let's start with the, um, the update of July. And we're gonna talk about the residential market. And we're gonna pretty much stay there. Today, we're not gonna get into any commercials or anything like that, because I don't want to. Um, and I don't think that you want to hear it either. So here we go. Uh, let's talk about the residential homes. So for the month of June, uh, it was a pretty decent month. Uh, with school, sorry, the month of July with school coming to an end. Um, June, I want to just touch back into June. So June, we had 1,600 homes that had sold uh, that were residential. July, a different story. So 1,300 homes, 1,312 to be exact. Uh, condominiums were 412. Uh, lots 61, multi-units 24, and one farm was sold over the month of July. The biggest thing here, though, is if you want to look at the change from 2020 to 2021, and that's where we start to see the big change. And you see how Ottawa is such a quieter town uh, come the summer months. Being again, being a government town, the city likes to shut down to a certain extent, and everybody kind of goes on vacation for the month of July and August. Just one of those things, it'll be fun to take a look at August stats because we're now in August for, you know, where the, the province has opened up. So everybody under the sun is getting out of town and they're traveling and, you know, they're staying within Canada, but they're traveling. So we're starting to see this massive lull in uh, real estate, which is fantastic for buyers, but sellers hang tight because guess what? The market will pick up again in September and you are still getting over asking. So let's get into the touch from last month. Uh, for July uh, versus 2020 and 2021. So for residential, in 2020 at this time in July, we sold uh, 1,641 homes. Again, 1,312 for 2021. That's a 20% decrease in the number of sales. That's, that's a lot. Uh, condominiums, same kicker. 542 and 20 in 2021, 412. A 24% decrease uh, in the number of units sold. Lots, same sort of thing. Again, we see that same number, 88 sold in uh, 2020 versus 2021, and we had 24, which is a, sorry, 63, which is a 28.4% decrease. And the only real increase was uh, the multi-units went from 18 in 2020 to whopping 24 in 2021, which is a 33% increase. But again, small numbers give you big numbers, uh, big percentage changes. So. The overall scheme of things we looked at in total was a 20% decrease, well, close to 21% decrease in the uh, number of units sold uh, this time last year. Uh, sales volume, again, last last month in June, we sold $1.4 billion worth of real estate for the month of June. Great job, everybody, every realtor that's out there. 2021, uh, July, a month later, we have did uh, $1.1 billion. So we had a $300 million uh, lack of inventory that were sold. Uh, the average sales price, again, six hundred and ten thousand dollars. But for residential, five eighty five versus the five sorry six eighty five versus five eighty five in twenty twenty. Um, condominiums we did four hundred and nineteen thousand dollars was the average sales price versus three fifty eight. Uh, lots again around the same two hundred and twenty twenty two hundred and twenty in twenty twenty one, which can get confusing with the twenties and the twenty ones, which is just me. Um, and you know, really that one farm that sold, not a big deal. Um, it is a big deal for the person that sold the farm and congratulations. Selling a farm is not easy, especially getting financing on a farm, unless you got a great mortgage broker and everything kind of works itself out. The sales by month, and this is where you start to see. So we're now seven months in, so I can kind of give you a little bit of a breakdown in seven months into, um, you know what we're seeing in terms of changes. So we're seeing a slight change. So in January, let's jump back to January, the average sales price was 677. Average days on market, 25. 
We're starting to build into the spring market. You can see where I'm going here. In February, it was $716,000 was the average sales price with 14 days on the market. Not spring yet, but the spring market is misunderstood. People think the spring market is March, April, May, uh, and it's really not. The spring market is February, March, um, because everybody who is looking to buy is serious. It's, it's happening now because they want to close. Uh, those, those stuff that ever happens in March and April are always going to close, usually in June and July and August, based on the kids in the summer. And, and those that got kids, they don't want to make those moves to those other homes uh, until school's done. So that being said, I know I just touched on February, but let's get into March. March was a total, um, the average sales price was 759. So we saw that increase uh, 10 days on the market. April, 743 as your average sales price. Nine days on the market. We're getting, we're, you know, it's, it's still picking up steam. May, 741 again, still nine days on the market. And with June, we touched on this before, 727. So we saw that slight decline in June and the brakes are getting pushed here. J July, here we are. 685 like I said earlier it's days on market though days on market now is 16 that's the average for the residential side 18 on the condominium side and conditional days on market if it's if it's with conditions is 19 days so we're starting to see a little more conditions coming into offers because we're not getting those multiple offer situations that we had before uh, because of the lack of inventory and now that we have you know a much better supply uh, we're starting to see a little bit less of the uh, multiple offer situations. That's not to say you're not going to get a multiple offer situation. That's going to really depend on your realtor, on how they're pushing your home and how they're going to try to market and sell it. Um, we used to back in last year at this time, and I'd even go as far as to say in March of, of this year, uh, we would help would hold offers just like everybody else would, uh, and we started just to notice that decline. The good thing was that we're not going to accept multiple offer situations by having a offer date, but we will do 24 hours irrevocable and at that point it's when you start to really push um, every other agent to bring an offer forward so if you do get one that's your your ploy to go ahead and you start pushing it make sure you have those 24 hours irrevocable so you have an opportunity to try to drum up another one two three four ten more offers depending on the on the listing and the list price so that's that and that's oh, it's a lot of talking in a matter of like minutes and a light number of minutes too, because I think this one's going to be a short one today. I don't know if I'll get into the whole um, length, lengthy ones that I've done before over, you know, 15, 16 minutes. But again, if you got questions, please respond. Please reach out. And we'll probably turn this up a little bit more than doing it just once a month because it's a little bit more fun for me. And it gives me a chance to just, you know, shoot the shit with you guys. One thing I want to talk about, uh, though that's the, the market. I, I can go on to some other stuff here. Let's, you know what, before I get into my beef, because I got a beef, and this beef came from a, um, a not a client, but a person that reached out to me to talk about, you know, changing services from another realtor to using myself and my team. And I want to talk to you guys about that because I think that's important that you, everybody understands stuff, okay? So let's get into the, the residential property by class for 2021 July. So out of those, you know, all those homes that had sold, I talked about the residential homes, there was uh, 888 homes that sold for the month of June um, that were uh, in, in a residential class. So those were 444 were you know, one and a half stories. Let's just get to the, the big, the bulk of the numbers. You've got two stories and then you've got your lovely um, bungalows. So two stories this year, we had a 19% decrease. Oh, you know what? It kind of keeps going with everything else in terms of the 20% once I start really looking at the numbers because it's a 19.8% decrease in the number of units sold, which is the same number, the 20%. Uh, again, the same thing with the bungalows. The fun part, though, is really none of this is fun. Not going to lie. No, it's all the same. 20% decrease. I got nothing else for this one. This one. Garbage sheet. This is garbage. And this other one, condominiums, garbage. Cares. Let's get on to the fun nitty gritty because it's July. And I too want to take a little bit of time because I'm going to the cottage just like I did last time. I came back from the cottage. Now I'm going to go to the cottage because it's the cottage. And it's also my wife's 40th birthday. So I want to give her a big party, a big surprise, and lots of fun stuff that's going on. It's going to be a great time. But let's talk about that other realtor that sucked. And their client reached out to me and my team to help them with their search. Now, 
one of the number one reasons why um, I get I get very 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 emotionally upset about certain things in this business, and one of them is tardiness. When we book, we book appointments, we booked them on hour. We used to book them on hour intervals, and this was pre-COVID. Um, today, it's more of a fifteen minute to half an hour time limit that you're going to get in the property. We book homes to show, and we will take, let's say, a client A out, uh, John and Sally. They're going to go out and see some homes. We're going to go see five homes, and we're going to book them uh, drive times and, and stuff like that. So we kind of have to play like, you know, like a GPS and, and, and plan your route and stuff like that. It's not a big deal. But when Realtor A is late for a showing, guess what that does to your clients? Guess how frustrated they feel inside because now you're taking their time, which is just as valuable as your time. So their time now to see this property is maybe five minutes because of your tardiness, because you couldn't get there on time. You didn't have a chance to reach out to your clients to let them know you couldn't make it on time. And you didn't have the decency to even let the listing agent know that you're, you're running a little bit behind schedule. Your tardiness screws up your own clients showing and every other showing that they have there afterwards. It screws up everybody else is showing that showing that same property after you because now you're late and you've now put everybody else in a pickle. Uh, the, the point is, is that when you go to the doctor's office or if you go to a dentist and you're going to one of those places and you go into their waiting room and you're on time because hey, I gotta be at the doctor's at two o'clock. So you're there usually at two o'clock. You're not usually late for the doctor. And then you sit and you wait 30 minutes. Tell me how pissed you are. Because me, myself, I'm furious. And that's when I want to reach out to even the doctor and say, hey, my time is just as valuable as yours. I don't do your job, but it's just as valuable to me as your time is to you. Have the decency to be on time for my appointment because I'm on time for your appointment. Simple. Go the same thing for the realtor. So these set of clients reached out to me because they, one, they were frustrated because of the properties that you were showing. Listen to their needs and their wants. Listen to them. If you can't deliver a... Um, they tell you that they want a driveway and they tell you that they want, you know, some space or whatever. And it's a, it's a $600,000 home, uh, in the country and it's got no driveway, but they told you they want a driveway. Are you going to show it to them? If it meets all the other boxes, sure. But listen to their wants and needs because they called me out of frustration for their agent that was not doing their job effectively. Um, the good thing is, is that uh, they are still with their realtor and I made sure that they stayed with them they, and they needed to tell their discrepancies to their agent, uh, but they needed to share that because it's important that they understand your frustrations. Don't be afraid to reach out to your realtor and tell them you're frustrated. It's important they know that. Anyways, now I'm just rambling on uh, and it's, it's August and it's cottage time and I got to check out. Uh, and a little bit, of, a little bit more R and R before we get back into the rampant craziness that is going to be September, because the kids go back to school. Yes. Uh, anyways, that's me, real estate cowboy Shaner. Uh, love you guys. Hope you have a fantastic summer. Enjoy the heat. Enjoy the warm weather. Be safe. Be strong out there. Uh, be vigilant and always keep your distance and wear your mask and yada yada yada. I don't even tell you because you hear it every day. Anyways, again, everybody, have yourself a fantastic summer. I will check you in September. And you will see a smile from ear to ear because, again, kids are back to school. Yes! Anyways, peace out, everybody. Love you. Ciao.